first time that Wall Street ever got shut down. Showing that God can shut down the economy of this nation like that. Amen. God can shut down the business area of this country like that. Yes, Said and go. He wants him. Sometimes he breaks man's hands to a standstill that they might know him. Amen. But they don't. They brought New Orleans. He brought New Orleans to a standstill, and they're still building the sins capital of the world in New Orleans. They don't care. <laughs> they brought the Northeast to a standstill, and they're still suffering. They don't care. They brought Joplin, Missouri to a standstill for the last year. Yes. They didn't learn nothing. God, let us be, have our, let our minds be a little bit different. Oh, having eyes to see, they see not. Amen. Having ears to hear, they hear not. Don't let us be like that. Let our spiritual eyes be open. Let our spiritual ears be open that we might know what God is saying. Amen. I'm not going to get to the point about coming out of darkness. I'll save that for another time. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. I, he said here, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, yes. when that trumpet sounds, it shall begin to sound the mystery of God will be finished. So Bless the Lord. You're not doing it tonight. You're not going to do it then. Bless the Lord. It's now. Now is the day of salvation. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to go over here. 11th verse, 11th chapter talking about this church that's going to prophesy and sackcloth and ashes and, 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 and they're trying to kill Christianity today. Yes. You know there's a real move on in America to kill Christianity? Yes, sir. Yes. They don't want you to say nothing about Christmas. Right. Next it'll be Easter. And they keep told me all this uh, you know, Rudolph the Red Nose and Reindeer and they got people thinking about Rudolph and people thinking about the Easter Bunny and uh, here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail and, and uh, taking Christ out of everything slow but sure. And uh, they're doing that. Misquote, the misinterpret the First Amendment of the Constitution as much as you can misquote it. There's nothing in there that's Cause for the separation of church and state. Amen. Not a thing. Just says they can't establish. And remember, when the Constitution was written, they were not talking about the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists. They were not going to let the Catholics reign, the Church of England <coughs> reign, but Christianity as a whole was to reign. Amen. Amen. That's what they were talking about. <clears throat> this is only half of one aspect. There'll be more coming. But I want to tell you, I want to be very specific about something before I sit down. Paul made this statement in, where is it, Second uh, Timothy? Well, let's go to James 1.22 first, and I'll... We, get, we have to be careful of the children of God. One is that we don't deceive ourselves. I don't, a lot of us don't have to worry about the devil or false preachers. But we sit here in this church and deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can actually sit here in this church tonight and deny God. Right. Well, you can't. 
There are many people who say, oh God, I love God, I love God, all the time. They're denying him. James makes this statement. See, it's not enough just to hear what men of God are saying. You must do what they're saying. And it's not enough. You have to remember something else in this for the preachers. When you preach a message, it's not only for them, it's for us. It's for us. That's why Paul told Timothy, take heed to yourself. That's also an aspect of salvation. Remember something. It's not your brother or your sister causing you trouble. It's that spirit you have. Amen. You can blame that brother all you want to, but it's your attitude. Jesus showed the right spirit toward his betrayer. The same spirit he took left of him for three and a half years. Christ never let his spirit be influenced by all that. Amen. Not my brother that causes me my problems. Here's my problems. Amen. Not my sister that causes me my problems. Here's my problems. Amen. Right there. Stand corrected. Oh, I can blame it on you all. They looked at me different. Then talked just a little bit different. That's why marriages are sometimes hard. It takes a long time for a man and a woman to understand one another. I don't know if we ever get there. <laughs> but remember, men, if there's a problem in your home, 95% of the time it's your fault. Mm -hmm. You're the head of the <laughs> And even if it's not your fault, if it remains in the home, it's 100% your fault. Amen. 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 Wow. The same way with the church. Mm -hmm. Brother, we got to watch ourselves. Amen. There's going to be problems in the church. Amen. May not be our fault. Amen. But if they stay in the church, it's our fault. Amen. 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 Don't deceive yourself. <clears throat> Don't be the one that deceives yourself. Because James said here, he said here uh, in the 21st verse, I start, wherefore I part all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness. God allows you to go so far and hang above that, you're just, you're too much. Yes. Okay. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able. Now remember, it says able. It doesn't say can, and it doesn't say will. You determine whether it's able or whether it will. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, because if that's what you do, you listen to messages, and six months from now you're still the same old person you were. You're not one inch closer to sanctification than you've ever been, and all you've done for six months is deceive yourself. You might as well have been out enjoying the pleasures of sin. Y'all listen to me because it's the truth. Yes. It's scripture. Amen. You sit in the house of God, you hear the word of God, and you don't go do it, you have deceived yourself. Amen. And then in 2 Timothy 2.12. I'm going to leave you all some time here. I'll be done in a few minutes. I'm not going to go into the coming out of light, coming out of darkness and getting over into light. That's something you must do. <clears throat> you, you can't live. I know this is what the Bible called the dark times. We're in darkness. 
But you can't live as a child of the light in the dark. You, if you're in the light, prove you're in the light by being a child of the light. Because if you're not a child of the light today, when the darkness is over, you're not going to be a child of the light then either. No. No. Here in... And one more thing else you need to know. I don't preach for amens and glories to God. I, believe, I preach because it's the scripture. It's the word of God. It's what God says. And that's all that really matters. What does God say? But here, he says, if we, in 2 Timothy 2, 12, <coughs> If we suffer, we should also reign with him. If we deny him, he'll also deny us. How do I deny the Lord? I can't really go into it too much. But I can deny the Lord because when I suffer, all I do is cry and come home. Come on. Yes, denying the Lord. You'll know when I, my spirit's not running. <laughs> How are you tonight, Brother Carlson? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just denied God. Yes. <laughs> because when you're suffering, remember something. God has laid out a plan for your life. Right. My life and my feelings and my upbringing is not the same as yours. Right. And only God knows how to get me from here to there. And only God knows how to get you from here to there. And only God knows how to get you from here to there. He knows what needs to work in your life. He knows what needs to work in my life. Yes. And it may take a whole lot more to work in my life than your life. But while he's doing it, I cannot be complaining, finding fault, <coughs> murmuring, complaining, yeah. upset with other folks, upset with other people. I can't get my hands up to work with God. I can't get to my feet and talk about God. Brother, I'm denying the Lord. This is where the righteous judgment of God <coughs> begins to meet the righteous and the unrighteous soul of people. I just want to take about a couple more minutes. You know why I should feel the way that I do? I should always walk in here with a praise in my heart. It shouldn't be long, take long for me to get my hands up and worship the Lord. It shouldn't be hard for me to get up and give my testimony. It shouldn't be hard for me to let you know how much I love God. How much he's done for me. What was that song we were singing tonight? About how God has done so much for me. I, I, how can I help but praise him? You sit out there with your mouth closed. And your hands glued to your side. And you can't get your mouth open to praise God. I'm assuming God's done nothing for you. But brother, if you got your mouth open, yes, and you're worshiping God, yes, and you're up testifying, I know God done something for you. I know you're a child of God. I know you have no question as to why you're here. I didn't, I'm not, I, we didn't come to the mountain with the lightning and the thunder where the law was going to be given I couldn't keep. I didn't come there. The 12th chapter of Hebrews makes this statement. He said, where have you come? Let me tell you where I've come. Where we are. I believe it's in Psalm 66, where the psalmist says, hey, I brought all this trouble, you want me in the net, you laid affliction upon my loins, and 
And then in the end he said, but when it was all over, you're in a wealthy place. You're in a moist place. <clears throat> and I don't care what you're going through, and I don't care what I'm going through. I went through a lot of trouble heard the last time I was in. But it hasn't dampened me. Lord, bless the Lord. It, it hasn't toned me down. Glory. It hasn't discouraged me or caused me to be in despair. Glory. You know why? Because I saw that wealthy place. Glory. Glory. Yeah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. And here is a wealthy place. Praise the Lord. This is where you're at tonight. I don't care what you're going through. When you walk through those doors, you came into a wealthy place. Amen. You came into a heavenly place Amen. to sit down with us in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Paul made this statement. He said, but we have come onto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. Do you feel God here tonight? Amen. Have you felt God here tonight? Is God alive in your heart tonight? Is God alive in this church tonight? Where do you think we're at tonight? We're not in a bar room or a pool hall or a football game. We're in the house of the living God. And we can praise God like it. We can worship like it. We can act like it. We can talk like it. We're in the city of the living God.